In today's video, you'll learn about ESG investing, including how to determine what is a good ESG company, how to connect your investments to your values, how to spot greenwashing, and similarities to corporate social responsibility. Let's make a social impact. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to The Social Impact Show, a channel where you get the latest strategies and tips to help you scale and grow your CSR and goodness programs. So I've got two special guests today, and they are the co-founders of Till Investors. Uh, first one is Ben Vivari and Kyle Purcell, and they also are the authors of the new book, Sustainable Investing, an ESG Starter Kit for Everyday Investors. And we'll talk about the book and Till Media um, a little later on in the show, but thank you very much, Ben and Kyle, for joining me today. Well, let's get right to it. And today we're going to be talking about ESG and corporate social responsibility, investing. So how do the concepts of corporate social responsibility and environmental, social, and governance investing compare? Like what are the similarities and what are some of the differences? Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question comparing CSR and ESG. Uh, you know, corporate social responsibility as a term uh, has been around for much longer. Uh, you know, back when I was getting, you know, my MBA, you know, uh, 15, 20 -ish years ago, uh, that was the real buzz term was corporate social responsibility. And where CSR came from was really an offshoot of stakeholder management theory, right? And engaging with your stakeholders. And it's really about a company, you know, thinking about itself and its corporate purpose and its corporate citizenship and, you know, setting those corporate values and, and driving employee engagement. But it's really ultimately an internally controlled exercise. Uh, you know, it's... It, while the activities can be engaging with different stakeholders, all of the decision making happens within the company. And ESG or you know environmental and social and governance investing, a lot of the same values are there when we talk about social responsibility and all of that. With ESG, the big difference is that there is an external control to the company and that's the investors. Right. The investors are telling the company what good means to them. And then they're looking for companies that align with those characteristics. So whereas with CSR, it's very much an internally driven exercise with ESG, that external check creates a lot more external and I would say a lot more effective accountability where it's not just, well, what are you saying about yourself? But what are investors saying about you having looked at, at all of these things? So I want to go further a little bit more into that in terms of when investors are looking at specific companies, I would imagine there is a, I don't know, a scorecard or a checklist that they're looking at for each company, obviously dependent on industry, mm -hmm. on what they're actually accomplishing. Now, I've had other you know guests in the past talk about standardizing those criteria for ESG. Is that something that is underway? Because from what my understanding is, there isn't a standard at the moment. Well, there's a couple places that you know, I guess companies could could check against. But is there something across the board that you know that all companies abide to, depending on their industry? So the short answer is no. Uh, the longer answer is, you know, it's a huge challenge for the ESG industry uh, because, you know, you know, if you think about, you know, where we are in terms of like general accounting, right? Even with like regular questions, like how much money did you make last year? There's so much interpretation. There's so much. Well, we can put this over here. We can categorize this over there. And then when you get to well a much more nebulous question like what sort of a corporate citizen are you right it makes it exponentially more difficult right and so there are lots of people out there doing really hard work and putting together these standards and trying to figure out the best way to do it uh the one that i like the best is uh SASB, uh the sustainability accounting standards board they're doing great work and it's just going to take a long time to get there right so no there's not great day standards yet yes the industry is working on them, but we need to get comfortable talking about uh, ESG themes, understanding that there are limitations in the data, but not letting the perfect get in the way of the good. Yeah, it's it's worth pointing out that um, there is some significant legislation happening in Europe and some significant 
um, sort of, uh, you know, the, their version of the SNC is uh, being very aggressive about creating standards for reporting and disclosure. And, you know, there's a number of different components of that, but the important part is they are trying to push hard from a governmental angle to say, hey, companies, you can't just sort of come up with a with standard that makes you look good or whatever. You've got to use some standards that are consistent and you have to report and be transparent in consistent ways. In the U.S., the SEC is kind of trailing along with what the EU is doing, but they're well behind. And there's a lot more political conflict here that's sort of slowing that down. But the, the effort is happening. So I want to shift to what makes a good, I guess, good, quote unquote, ESG company, because some, some, I guess, some industries and some companies in those industries are more like you, they're more, I don't know, visible in terms of what they can do in terms of ESG. But then there's some companies that, how does that impact them? So yeah, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to do that. In fact, uh, it's something that we spend a good bit of time on on our book, um, trying to go into some detail about how to think about this question uh, and how to um, look into it without necessarily having to have a financial degree to be able to evaluate, you know, reports of, of various kinds. Um, you know, a perfect example is is a company like Tesla, right? I mean, you've got a product that clearly has been a leader in advancing electric cars, which is a leader in sort of driving us toward net zero, a very important component of getting to net zero, if that is a goal for, for you as, a, as an investor, is to get away from internal combustion engine cars, right? So to the degree that Tesla has led that charge, that's really, that's really positive. On the other hand, um, Tesla has a lot of issues on the social side of the scale, where um, employee, um, you know, employees are not always happy. Um, they don't always do a very good job of uh, working with their suppliers or ensuring that their suppliers are as, you know, sort of ESG friendly as the company is. And then you've got Elon Musk, who is himself a pretty controversial figure, um, and also someone who kind of dispels the as you know, not being for him. So, you know, it's a great question. Like, is this a good company or a bad company? If you look at the various ESG rating agencies, you'll see that they kind of differ on how they evaluate it as well. So what we try to encourage people to think along the lines of is you have to really know what you believe and what's really a priority for you. It's very difficult to go out and find the perfect portfolio, but, uh, you know, of companies that are all doing great, great things. But it is possible to go out and find companies who are managed in a way that corresponds to the things you care about and the values that you have. And if you can get kind of granular about what you care about, that can lead you in the right direction. So, you know, you were speaking about your values and, and I guess most people, when we're talking about investing, they invest in funds and companies. So how could you invest, I guess, in funds that meet your values? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really what it's all about. Right. Um, and so if you, if you start from the premise of you've got to know yourself and what you really, really care about. One of the ways that if you go to a financial advisor or if you talk to people in the industry, they'll maybe throw a questionnaire in front of you and say, do you care about environmental issues? Do you care about gender equality issues? Do you care about social issues? That's important. It's important to know how you feel about various larger issues and what your priorities are there. But we think it kind of leaves something important out and we call it the fighting style. So the fighting style is there are basically three different ways that uh, three different strategies that and this the companies try to apply ESG criteria in their funds. And so instead of using the industry language, which is very confusing and no one understands it, we try to convert it into fighting styles. And the question is, if you wanted to change something, how would you go about doing it? 
So, because a lot of these practices really do represent change in the way that corporate America works. So, you know, if you had, for example, a, um, an alcohol retailer down the street that was selling to minors, what would you do? Would you just never go to that company again? Would you go run in the door and go talk to the manager and see if you could get them to listen to your concerns? Or would you go research other, you know, alcohol sellers and try to find ones that are doing things the right way? Um, and, you know, for the most part, people understand that kind of challenge. If you do that, that corresponds to a few different, uh, you know, fighting styles, which we call avoiding, rewarding, and engaging, right? And that corresponds to the way that companies, investment companies set up their funds. So you can either avoid its whole companies or whole sectors of the economy that you don't like. You can choose instead to reward companies that you think are doing a better job, even if they're not doing the best job, if they're doing better than their peers on certain issues, you might consider them for investment. And then there's engagement, and engagement is voting proxies, having meetings with management, things of that nature. Yeah, I guess the 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 big point I'm, I was I keep thinking about was, you know, it, it goes back to my question about the criteria that companies, you know, as an investor, I'd, I'd want to look at, you know, how certain companies are doing doing what. But do you think that as a maybe as an uninformed investor looking at ESG scores, do you think maybe they're a little bit simplistic in terms of oh they've only checked because they've checked certain boxes that means they're doing they're quote unquote doing ESG, but are they actually making a difference? And is there any way as an investor act to actually know this company? they say they're doing ESG, are they actually seeing the results and outcomes of their activity? So that's a really tricky question, right? Uh, and let's let's start at it from the company. We'll talk about it at the company level first, then we'll talk about it at the fund level. Um, so, you know, if a company says it's doing ESG, that's great in a bubble, right? Mm -hmm. But what you really want to do is you want to start uh, comparing that company to maybe what its competitors say about their ESG practices. You really want to go look at their sustainability reports and see, you know, are they uh, reporting in a way that's consistent with the standards that are out there, as imperfect as they may be, right? How can you compare one against the other? Um, and then when you get uh, into the, well, oh, let me come back to, and then in terms of the outcomes, that becomes even trickier. Right. Because it's not just, oh, we want to treat our employees well. The the outcome is, well, we want to have, you know, happier employees. Right. And how do you really get a measure of that that you can really trust? Right. Oh, we want to have uh, better yeah. environmental practices. Um, but, it, you know, maybe you can measure this and measure that. But how can you say, oh, and therefore, you know, we've contributed Point one degree less uh, global warming, right? And there's a huge rush to put all these uh, you know numbers out there that really don't pass the smell test, right? So when I when I come back to the concept of you need to be comfortable with the fact that you're not going to get that you know perfect zero point five percent whatever it is, that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? And there are tools out there that the industry is putting out, like that, you know, will say, oh, well, this this company is, you know, 0.2 degrees aligned over the Paris, uh, you know, goals for 2050 or whatever it is. And you sort of look at that and you go, really? You can get that granular, that specific, right? There are ratings agencies that'll say, well, this company on a scale of one to 40 is a 25.32 ESG. And you go, really? Right? Like you can get that granular and you can get that trusted. Uh, so um, the reality is that you've got to sort of uh, understand what's feasible and what's not feasible and really uh, look at the bigger picture, you know, at, ask those basic questions about, you know, what are they saying about themselves? How do I compare that to a competitor? How do I, uh, how does, how does that jibe with what, you know, industry best practices are? Uh, and, and really, uh, you know, understand that you're not getting the perfect picture. 
it might be a little blurry, but it's better than no picture at all. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's important to say that, um, you know, w the touchdowns for us are clarity and consistency in the way that these, whether it's a company or a fund, the way that they communicate. Now, do they say what they do? And can you tell whether they do what they say? And, uh, that you know, that's, I think that that's a, a more nebulous standard, but it's a good standard because we don't want to get into a position where people say, well, it's the data is not perfect, so we're just not going to bother with any of this. Um, the fact that there are people making a demand and sh and expressing that demand by making these kind of investments in these sort of ESG strategies, that's what's pushing companies to make improvements, not only in their practices, but in the way that they measure them and, and report on them. So these things, I think, are, are really important, uh, even if they're not perfect. <laughs> You know, so to ask a question in a similar vein, how big of a concern is greenwashing both from, you know, companies and fund providers? Yeah, so it's a huge question, right? And it's a huge challenge because any time there is that fuzziness, there is that blurriness, that's an ob that's an opportunity to sort of obfuscate and, uh, you know, paint something in one way and uh, act in a different Right. And so, uh, you know, it's a huge challenge. But, you know, the, the solution to that, to, to calling out and finding out that greenwashing was very similar to what we were just talking about. Right. Don't just take what the company says is gospel. Right. Go to third parties, see what they're reporting compared to their competitors, see what the industry best practices are. Right. And then with the fund providers, it is really, you know, look under the hood. Don't just say, oh, this fund says ESG on it, and there's a nice picture of a guy in a kayak on a pristine lake, and therefore this is the environmentally friendly one, right? Instead, it's, well, you know, maybe look at the prospectus. It's a big, scary document, but, you know, find the part about the investment strategy and read through it a little bit. Does that language line up with the companies that you see in the fund's holdings, right? If so, great. If not, uh oh, and you might want to find a different spot, right? It's not, you know, a number of companies have been called out and fined by the SEC for, you know, saying they're greenwashing when, or saying they're they're green when they really aren't, and it's not a coincidence that those same companies and those same funds are the ones that talk the least about themselves and what they are actually doing, right? So by by being a discerning consumer, right, you can find those greenwashing or potentially greenwashing uh, funds and companies and move to one that does a better job of communicating to you. Would, would, would one factor be the, I guess, like an investment in a long-term plan or they've been doing, the company has been doing it for a number of years because it's easy to say, hey, we did this for this year, but if there's an actual long-term strategy and you can see, you know, every year, They've been doing this for, I don't know, three, four or five years. Is that is that one way that, you know, an investor can take a look at? A hundred percent, especially when it comes to looking at funds, right? Funds that have been around for 20, I mean, there are funds that have been around for 30 years that have been investing in this way. Now, obviously, those, they have developed because tools have become better over those t that time frame. But, you know, the ones that are, you know, Johnny come lately's, they came lately, right? They're they're just in the last couple of years. And uh, so there's a little bit less of a cachet there. And there's a little bit, you know, as an investor, you always are looking for a history of success, whether it's in ESG metrics or in traditional, um, you know, investing metrics. So yes, 100%. So shifting to, you know, when we talked about CSR and ESG, if they are closely aligned, how can a corporation or a company you know, interested in corporate social responsibility, help encourage ESG investing. Yeah, so I think there's really two things here. One is in you know encouraging ESG investing in terms of cooperating with the industry, right? So you know if you're a big enough corporation, right, you should be participating in the discourse. If there is an industry trade group, you should be a part of it, or you should be leading it. Right. If, if, you know, understand what the standards are, right. And report them as best you can. You know, it's at this point, 
almost every you know Fortune 500 company puts out a sustainability report of some kind, right? But some of them are much more rigorous than others, and it's really telling to look at these. You know, to compare, say, to you know, compare a Walmart to a Target, or compare a Nike to an Under Armour, whatever it is, and see how differently they respond to what should be "quote unquote" standards, right? And you can see who's really in it for the, you know, to really, um, you know, help boost their quals, and who's just doing it as a tick box exercise, right? So that's the first thing is participate with the industry. But the second thing is, and this is for a corporation of, of any size, is make sure that you're offering ESG investing as an option in your retirement plans, in your 401ks, right? Your employees should have an option to invest in an ESG-friendly fund in their retirement plans. Um, and if you are uh, an employee, that is what you can be asking your employer to do. I want to see these, uh, these plans uh, showing up as an option for me. Right. I mean, the the big challenge here is that when they hear about it, many, you know, the vast majority of people would like to be invested sustainably, but on the ground, very few actually are. And it's because those little connection points are being missed. It's not showing up in the 401k plan. It's not, you know, the first thing you see when you sign up for Fidelity for your IRA or whatever it is. Right. And so, you know, going to your employer or going to your plan administrator and saying, I want to have an environmentally friendly option that I can invest in um, is is a great way to sort of you know push push this ahead. One of the big reasons that corporate America is on board with the whole ESG concept is because of employee uh, competition and, and retention. So the challenge of bringing talent into your organization though, from the millennial generation, from the Gen Z generation, you know, this is the future of your company, and these these employees, in general, speaking broadly, but consistently, they have you know consistent polling has shown that you know people in these generations, these younger folks, really care. They really care about the company's practices. They really care about the 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 role that a company plays in the life of their community. These are these are really interesting issues. So demonstrating to your employee base that you are hearing that and you're reacting to that, um, you know, it's a really valuable way to pay people around. So can you tell, I guess, can you tell us more about Till Investors and how your company is helping, uh, I guess, investors and companies with ESG and CSR? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, Ben and I, we operate a, an investment communications firm sort of separate from Till. But we both really have an interest in and a passion for the role that sustainable investing can play for individuals, for companies. Um, and we're very enthusiastic, actually, about uh, you know the, the opportunity to try to help people understand what is, in truth, a, a completely new way to think about money and the way that you uh, invest it. Um, and I could talk about that for a real long time, but just to keep things tight. Um, so we're, we've got this book that we've got coming out um, that's talking to individual investors, help them kind of understand in a more practical way what ESG investing is and why it's valuable. And we also, we've worked a little bit with advisors doing some educational sort of seminars with them, but we're also working with some small institutions. Uh, like nonprofits and and foundations and things of that nature, to help them figure out if you've got an interest in ESG investing, how can you weed through uh, the different options and the different questions and the different myths and uh, and uh, uncertainties that people have to kind of land on a strategy that makes sense for your organization, where you can then go talk to an investment advisor or others to implement. And can you tell us a little bit more about the the book that you're that's about to come out? Yeah, sure. So you know, it comes back to that same initial premise of people want to invest sustainably and they're not doing it. So how do we close that gap? Uh, what the book is really trying to do is to give people who are investors but don't really think of themselves as investors, but they think of themselves as maybe savers. I'm saving for retirement. I'm saving for college for my kids. I'm saving for whatever it is to give them the confidence to really look at their investments and to really own what they own, right? This is something you own. 
You should know what it is. And we're going to help you own something that you feel a bit better about. Because when you think about what you own, and if you are, uh, you know, someone who really cares about the environment and you think, wait a minute, I'm uh, invested in Chevron and Exxon and all of my retirement savings. How did that happen? Right. Well, we're going to give you some, you know, we're going to give you a pass to get out of that. Right. And to get into something that you feel better about, um, you know, it, it it's not meant to be, you know, it's a pretty quick read. It's not meant to be like, you know, an academic exercise where you're going to have to, you know, take a course for three months. Um, but it's really about making it simple, making it hopefully pretty easy, but ultimately making it really meaningful uh, in how you uh, think about your investments. And when's the book coming out? October 9th, it'll be out on, uh, on all of your favorite retailers, uh, Barnes Noble, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can pre-order it now. Uh, I hope you do. And we, uh, we'll leave a link in the description uh, once awesome. we get the book. Awesome. So Ben and Kyle, I know we could talk about this topic, you know, ESG for a very long time, but if our audience wants to connect with either of you or wants to learn more about Till Investors, where, where's the best place to reach you? So the best place is to go to tillinvestors.com. You'll find all your contact us links, all of our socials, all of our links to finding the book. Uh, if there if there's something to click on, uh, we'll put it right there for you. Yeah, and a lot of great content that we've tried to put out, so educational, interesting content to help you understand a little bit more about what this stuff is and why it's why it's worthwhile. Learn more about environmental social governance by checking out this playlist here and this playlist to learn from other social impact professionals. Thanks for watching and we'll catch your next episode.